One of the fastest ways to get started with off-grid communications using MeshTastic is to buy one of these Rack WizBlock MeshTastic starter kits. Literally right out of this bag, I'm gonna show you how to get a fully operational MeshTastic radio that'll pair to your phone all within like five minutes, and that'll enable you to communicate with other MeshTastic devices without internet or cell coverage. You don't need to buy any batteries, antennas, cases, cables, hardware, nothing. Literally everything you need is right in this bag. Now I did 3D print out one of these really cool uh, minimalist cases, which I'll link to below. But honestly, if you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry about it. You can just come up with something or go commando for the time being. But ultimately there's no soldering or assembly required. Now I will mention a few additional upgrades you might want to consider uh, if you're buying a whiz block, but really the only thing you have to worry about is getting the correct frequency, which is 915 megahertz. If you're in the US, if you're in other countries, it's different. But I'll have links to this in the description below uh, with a few different sources because stock is really hard to come by right now. So I'll give you a few different options so you can go through and uh, try to find one of these kits. So this is the WizBlock MeshTastic starter kit. Includes everything you need to get an operational radio up and running. So it includes a USB-C cable. So this is what you're gonna be powering the device with. You just need a way to provide power to USB. This is the LoRa antenna. Of course you can upgrade this if you want a uh, better range. And this is the Bluetooth antenna. So this is what we're gonna use to connect it to our phone wirelessly. They give you some hardware for mounting it to whatever case you come up with. And this is the radio itself. So this is actually two different products. So the thing that's really cool about WizBlock is it's modular. So uh, the bigger board here is called a baseboard. So this is the Rack 19007 specifically. And then already installed is the core. So uh, you can just add different modules onto the baseboard, if you can kind of think of it as a motherboard, uh, to build onto it. So that's one of the reasons why the, the WizBlock is so popular because of its modularity. But it's extremely power efficient, so that's the other big reason why uh, people love this setup. So I'll go over some of the additional modules you can get later on, but for now, all we need to do is grab the Bluetooth antenna. Everything's labeled here. So if you look, it might be hard to see, but this says LoRa on the right side and BLE on the left side. So the antenna just clips right onto the connector right here. Takes a little bit of pressure to get these to uh, click on. And then grab the LoRa antenna and we'll click that in place as well. There we go. Now, one important thing, you always wanna make sure your antennas are installed, well, specifically the LoRa antenna, uh, before you power on device or else you can burn out the board. Now, for the initial setup, we're gonna use a computer only because we won't be able to connect it to our phone with Bluetooth without knowing the pin. And since we don't have a screen on here yet, we're not gonna be able to retrieve it. So go ahead and open up a Chrome browser. It has to be Chrome or else this won't work and go to client.meshtastic.org. Now, don't plug the radio into your computer just yet. So you're just gonna click new connection. It gives you three options. You'll go to serial, click new device. And I didn't realize you could do this, but apparently Chrome can interface with USB devices. So now what you're gonna do is grab a USB-C cable and plug it into the radio, but you wanna pay attention to this screen because whatever pops up on that screen is gonna be your radio. So in this case, tiny USB, uh, COM13 is what popped up. So we'll select that, click connect, and there it is right there. So we'll click on it. And literally we now have a fully functioning MeshTastic uh, WizBlock radio. Now I'm gonna show you how to connect it to your cell phone, but first I just wanna point out, look, we see uh, my other, my T-beam. So that's this radio right here, just popped up on the WizBlock. So if we want, we can select this node uh, go ahead and enter a message, tap enter, and check this out. I've already got the message here. If I go to that node, we can see test message is here, and then I can reply. And if I go back to uh, our computer here, we can see we've received the message. So again, this is all happening between these 
to radios. Um, so it's not using cell, it's not using internet. All right, so I'm not gonna go through all of the settings here, um, but I just wanna point out, if you go to config, this is where you're going to configure all of the different settings. I noticed that, um, now keep in mind, the WizBlock is gonna come with a default version of MeshTastic uh, installed. You're likely gonna want to flash the latest version, which I'm not gonna go over in this video, but there's gonna be some defaults that uh, you might wanna change. Uh, one of them being the role. So there's a list of different roles here. I noticed the WizBlock by default uh, has the router client role. I'm gonna change it to client because I'm gonna use this as something that I'm just gonna have on my person uh, where I'm gonna have it connected to my phone to the MeshTastic app and use it like a personal communication device. So I'll just select client, click save, and the radio will then reboot. So on the MeshTastic website, it kind of goes through all the different role types. Uh, the thing that interested me was this comparison chart right here. And I just noticed that the router client role had the highest power consumption. Um, otherwise, it's pretty similar to a client. It just doesn't prioritize routing. So uh, if you want to dive into this, I'll have a link to this in the, in the description below, but I wouldn't worry too much about that right now if you're just trying to get up and running. Now, one thing I've had trouble with after saving settings is it seems like the website does not reconnect to the radio automatically. Um, so what I recommend doing is just refreshing the page and making that connection again. You should still see the radio um, listed under serial if everything's still connected. So you'll go ahead and do that. And from there, we can go back to config and go over to the Bluetooth tab to set up the Bluetooth so you can connect to your phone. So what we need to change under Bluetooth is the pin. So by default, it does a random pin. We wanna just set it to fixed, uh, only because since we don't have a screen on the WizBlock, which you can add one if you want to, um, there's no way for us to retrieve what the random pin is every time it's requesting a Bluetooth connection. Um, there is one other way you can do it through the console connected to the computer, but I'm not gonna go over that. Simple fix, just um, go to fixed pin, type in a number, we'll just leave it as the default, and we'll click save again. And now we can go over to our phone and download the MeshTastic app. So it's free on Apple and Android, it's open source. Um, so go ahead and download that. We'll tap open and we'll see a list of nodes or, or radios that are available. So uh, Android and Apple are slightly different, but you basically uh, wanna try to find the Bluetooth tab. I can't remember what it is on, on Android. And the first two radios that you see here are my uh, T-beams. So I have two T-beams that I've built. The third one here is the WizBlock. So we'll tap that. It's requesting a pin. So I'm gonna type in that pin number, tap pair, and it connected successfully. So we now have a fully functioning MeshTastic radio. Um, we can do messages on the primary channel uh, to anybody who's in range with us. We can do direct messages. We can take a look at all the nodes uh, that have been detected by this. So you can see we have a list of nodes here. Look at the mesh map, um, and you also have full control over all the different settings uh, to further customize uh, the parameters of the radio. All right, so real quick, I wanna just point you in the right direction to flash the new firmware. I wanna go over some of the modules that you can get to expand or improve the WizBlock. And I'm gonna show you a few different sources uh, where you can buy this uh, MeshTastic starter kit. So the first thing uh, to flash the new version of MeshTastic, just go to flasher.meshtastic.org. It's really simple, you just select in in this case, you're gonna do the rack 4632. You're gonna connect it to the computer just like we did uh, for the client and it'll kind of walk you through the whole thing. It's pretty simple. I think you can figure it out. Now, uh, the link below that I have uh, to, to find the MeshTastic WizBlock starter kit um, is a genius link. So what that means is it's gonna give you a few different options because the stock is really hard to come by um, right now. So uh, some of these are affiliate links. I think the Alexi or AliExpress is not. Um, so just whatever whatever's in stock, whatever is gonna get it to you faster, um, go with that one. But I've got Amazon, um, which is official actually. So Amazon Rack is the, the company that makes the uh, the product. So it's an official Rack uh, Amazon listing. I also have uh, Rockland, which is 
according to people who are, you know, bigger radio nerds than myself, because I'm a total newbie with this, uh, Rockland's been great. I've ordered a few things from Rockland, um, especially if you're looking for antennas, I would definitely recommend kind of just whatever they recommend. Um, I've got, I actually have, so check this out. I just got this stuff from Rockland. Um, I bought this to go on top of my house plus a really nice antenna cable uh, and some tape and fittings and stuff. So I'll be doing a video on mounting that later, but definitely recommend Rockland for like quality antennas and, and kind of radio uh, parts for Meshtastic. And then you can also check out Rack. Um, that's the company that makes this, uh, this product. So you can buy it from them directly. That's where I personally bought mine. I think they ship these uh, from China. So you're going to wait a little bit. Again, the most important thing you need to do is make sure you have the correct, uh, frequency selected, but there are some other configurations as well. Um, I can't really see here, but I'm going to show you some of those actually right now. So mesh tastic, as far as whiz block goes, supports a number of different peripherals. So by default, you don't have a GPS, uh, built into the starter kit. It's something that you would add on. So this is the uh, one of the GPS sensors that is um, compatible with Meshtastic. So from what I understand, you just buy this, you pop it onto your board, and boom, you've got uh, GPS. Some other examples of peripherals. Uh, buzzer, I don't think that's really relevant. Um, the most common things I hear talked about are the environmental sensors. So temperature and humidity sensor, barometric pressure. Um, and I think there's also a, like an IR, basically like a motion sensor type of thing, which I'm thinking about doing like a driveway sensor, um, build like a, a remote driveway sensor. I think that would be kind of cool. So WizBlock is just kind of cool because you do have that modularity and you can kind of add on to it. Now, if you want an all-in-one package with all of those bells and whistles, you can check out my video on the T-Beam Supreme. It has a built-in screen, comes with the device, uh, 18650 battery holder on the back. Obviously this case is 3D printed, but um, includes environment sensors like temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, has a built-in GPS. So it kind of has all of those additional features all built into uh, one product. So you can check out my other build vi video where I built this actual device um, and give you a parts list and everything like that. But the one thing I will say about the T-beams I have are they are very power hungry. So I cannot get even like a full day uh, 24 hours without the battery dying. So um, excellent option if you are going to be able to have it set up with dedicated power. Um, but if you're looking primarily for something that you can be off grid with for prolonged periods of time, the whiz block has a much better battery life. Um, and a lot of those things, if you don't need these options, um, it's kind of a waste to spend that power on those different modules. So WizBlock is really great for kind of bare bones if you want to set it up that way and have like ultimate uh, power, low power consumption. I'll have links to buy the starter kit. It's all you need. Don't get overwhelmed with like all these other options. Just pick up one of these. And um, even if you don't have a 3D printer and can't get a case, like you can just figure something out and get started with Meshtastic. Now I'm gonna be doing more videos on Meshtastic. So definitely uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and that's gonna do it for this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.